Good morning. Scripture reading this morning will come from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 through 28. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he, gr- when he was grown up, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. Good morning, everybody. You know, I found it interesting Mark came up here and said those wonderful things about his wife and then let us in angry words. Did anybody, <laughs> did anybody catch that? And ended with love one another. Um, after Mark said that uh, it's because he treats her so well, I turned back and said, we will be offering an invitation this morning, all right? <laughs> it has come to go be good and sing praises and maybe even to laugh a little bit in the house of the Lord, amen? And um, I may have thrown you off guard a little bit with that first slide happy new year and you're thinking whoa 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 whoa! i've still got a month to go uh what happened to december i know december moves fast well i looked at a survey this week by home improvement a website they surveyed 4,000 people when was it okay to put up your christmas lights this is a big debate many of you may know as you go shopping and in the stores and in the neighborhoods most people said they plan in november but that December 1st was the most common response that they would be putting lights up. The one that stood out to me in the survey was 3% of people said they would put them up on Christmas Day. Those are some of you, aren't they, (laughs) right? I mean, guys, we go shopping on the 24th, we put the lights up on the 25th, and it's all over by what? The 26th, there you go. I know that this is a wild month and a hard month and a busy month, for a lot of us. And so I wanted us to stop for a moment and maybe go a different direction. I don't want to rush December. I don't want to rush 2022. Uh, this is the last time that I will formally speak to you this year. Um, this is my Sunday to preach and uh, Stephen is going to lead us out with the life of Christ and the things that he has planned there. And then I know on the 25th, a lot of us will gather here that Sunday together. And then as we start the new year, I don't preach until about two or three weeks into the new year. So I really didn't have a good time to do a new year's lesson. So ta-da, here we are, right? And so we're going to talk about next year, uh, not to stress you, not to put extra uh, burden on you. I want you to enjoy the month of December and all the things, but I do want you to start thinking about next year. I couldn't find a survey that said, when is it too early to wish people a happy new year? So happy new year. All right. And 2023 is around the corner. Uh, One thing I'd like you to think about starting might be a a lesson series we've been doing on Wednesday nights. Uh, We have a series that has been going for a while. We studied Joseph and we're going to study Moses for a few uh, weeks here. And and we've been studying a lot about Jesus. And those guys are very connected. Uh, I was thinking, and and Stephen kind of made me think about this on the road to Emmaus. He talked about how Jesus met those men. And when he sat down, they had a Bible class. And and I wanted my sermon to be a little more about that, but some things changed it this week. And I always thought about, wow, what was that like? Uh, What was it like to have a Bible class from Jesus? And it says on the road to Emmaus that Jesus preached to them or or stopped and talked to them. and, And he talked from Moses on. And I thought that was interesting. He didn't start at Abraham. He didn't start at Adam. He didn't start at Noah. Why Moses? And so I began to think about that, and I thought about some of the similarities between Jesus and Moses, and I thought about some of the things in Hebrews 3 and 4. Maybe I should have been in Hebrews 3 and 4 today because they talk about the Sabbath uh, and and how Moses, uh, Jesus is better than Moses, and Jesus is uh, bringing a different kind of Sabbath. But um, I started thinking about the things they did. They both spent time in a wilderness. 
They both were born under interesting circumstances. Uh, they both were born in a time where children were not appreciated and even killed. Uh, both of them are going to spend time fasting. Uh, they both become leaders. They both lead a people to freedom, one from slavery and one from sin. And so if you're looking for something to do on a Wednesday night, I want to encourage you for the next few Wednesday nights, we're going to look at Moses as he leads us to leadership. One of the things as we approach 2023 is I hope some of you will begin to think about what am I going to do here at Old Union? What, what is my role? Maybe that's changed because of uh, you're getting in a different part of your life. Maybe it's because you're new to us and you're ready to get involved. Uh, maybe it's because there's some new ministries here that weren't here in years past. Or maybe there are just some things we're missing that maybe you have the talents to do. And so we're going to talk for the next few Wednesday nights up until the end of the year about Moses being led to leadership. We're not going to talk about everything in his life. We're not going to do the whole thing of Exodus. We're just going to talk about when God calls you to lead. And some of you already said, whoa, I'm not called to lead. Neither was Moses. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But that doesn't mean that God didn't have a plan to use him and others around him. So if you can be with us on Wednesday nights, we would love that. I will let you know for the rest of the year, uh, starting 2023 on Wednesday nights, uh, we're going to be in one of these two places. I'm not sure. I'm leaning towards January, February, March being in the book of Philippians. I told the class it's usually kind of gray outside and dreary and maybe we need some joy. Um, and then maybe we will do the parables on into the summer. Uh, that'll kind of let us revisit Jesus and some of his teachings. But if you're not a part of one of our Bible programs, will that be our John study on Sunday nights at 5 o'clock uh, or our Bible studies on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock? Or I know a lot of you are here. You're obviously here this morning. Um, let you know that some of the other opportunities that you have as we head into the new year. Because it's going to be here whether we expect it or not. Let's talk about newness. Um, you have a handout this morning. And the reason you have a handout is this is not my typical kind of sermon. I know typically when I preach, I tell you to turn to a passage and we kind of stay in that passage and we break that passage apart. This morning, we're going to be several places in the Bible. And I wanted to put these scriptures out in front of you so that you could follow along there. I encourage you to look them up in your Bible. They're there. I didn't make them up. I also encourage you maybe at the end of this sermon to fold this and hide it somewhere in your Bible when you need to find it in 2023. Maybe you need to put it in the beginning if you're a read through the Bible person and find it around Genesis. Maybe you need to put it right there before the Gospels if you're a read the Gospels person at the beginning of the year. Maybe you need to just tuck it randomly in the pages of your Bible and one day you're opening your Bible and there it is and then maybe the things you need on that day. But I want to talk about how to make a fresh start. Isaiah says it this way, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah says new things are coming. And guys, I don't know what 2023 has in God's plans. I didn't know what God had planned in 2023. And put whatever number with it. Some of us are here because God has had plans in our lives and done things with us. And it has been incredible. But maybe 2022 hasn't been your year. And so I want you to have a chance to start looking to 2023 and seeing what God is doing. God is doing new things. He's making roads in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. And so in John 10.10, 10, he reminds us that the thief does not come except to steal and to kill, and to destroy. I have come that you may have life, and that you may have it more abundantly. We have been studying the life of Jesus in this congregation for a year plus. It has been a slow, steady study. That may be new for some of you. Maybe some of you are used to coming in, and you do a lesson here, and you do a lesson here, and you do a lesson here. But we have really slowed down the life and the teachings of Jesus so that we could be better Christians, Christ-like. And there have been some weeks in there that I have been called to think. There have been some weeks in there I've been reminded of, of words and passages, like I told you on the road to Emmaus. I don't know that I'd ever noticed that he started with Moses when he talked to those people. There have been other things that we have stopped and really had to be challenged about. And so we have studied the life of Jesus, the one who came that we might have life more abundantly. You know who steals and kills? The devil. The devil. Not Jesus. 
And so we are reminded that he has come for a purpose. And his purpose was for us to be in relationship with God. And so as we head in 2023, I want you to start this new year. I've kind of got an acrostic here that may be a little simple for some of you, but it helps me remember some things and hopefully will help you as we head into this study. I hope that you will follow along with me today. So how do we understand God? Guys, God is more interested in our future than our past. Have you ever thought about that? God is more interested in our future than our past. I am a professional historian. That's what I do on a daily basis. I talk about past. I don't get to talk about future because history isn't about future. Sometimes my kids will ask things like, can we get extra credit in here? That comes a lot this time of year, <laughs> right? And sometimes I say, well, let me ask you. I said, if you got extra credit and in a history class, you got 103 does that mean you know the future, <laughs> right? What is that 3% that I'm supposed to tack on there? In history, it's about our past. And you know who often does exactly what that verse just said? Steals our future, the devil, because of what? Our past. And we let him because we do not believe in a Jesus who came to give us life more abundantly. And so I hope you will be able to leave 2022 behind and some of you say, I cannot wait to leave 2022 behind. And that may be true, and we'll talk about that. But for some of you, 2022 was a good year. For some of you, you lived life abundantly. So let's start today. The first thing we need to do as we head towards 2023 is to stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. You know what we're good at? Making excuses. Every one of you right now, I could come to you with something or something and automatically you're going to say, oh, but, and you immediately have an excuse. One of the reasons that I asked the reading today be out of Hebrews is because of Moses. We're going to study Moses in a few Wednesday nights and he's going to make excuses. He's going to tell God why he can't do something. And sometimes I think we often have those excuses. And in the Bible, there are lots of people who have excuses. I think of Moses, I think of Gideon, I think we could go down a list of people who say, well, God, I don't know that that's me, right? Maybe you think, I don't have what it takes. I don't have what it takes. How do you know? How do you know? I would encourage you to read stories of people in the Bible who also didn't think they had what it took. And yet God used them to do things that we still teach our kids and we still read as adults. Have you ever thought about that? I've often thought that I think we think the story ends in Revelation. But guys, do you realize God's story still goes on in your life? The gospel is just as relevant today to those who need to hear the good news as those that heard it in Acts chapter 2. Stephen is going to start us on a study, and I know he's already announced this, so I'm not taking anything from him, on a study of the book of Acts. Now that we have studied Jesus, what does his church look like? And his church looks like one that has stopped making excuses and not worrying about their talents and instead worrying about what they can do through God. Others of you may say, well, it's my past. I can show you story after story where God uses people with a past. And it's not the past we might expect. It might be a past that in some people's mind disqualify. But God says, no, you have the qualities that I need to lead to the future. I think of other excuses. Well, there are just so many things I can't control. That's true. If anything this generation has learned in the last few years, there are things out of our control. Amen. Three of you. Great. I wish the other uh, 150 would come tell me then how to get through that, okay? Because I've had a lot of things that have been out of my control the last few years. There have just been things that I, God didn't ask me. How about you? God didn't ask me about what was going to go on in world events or even in home events. And so sometimes I think we say, well, I'm just not in control. Well, there are things we will never control. Guys, that's why God is in control. And there are just other things that people say like, well, I don't know what the future holds. You're right, we don't. 
The only thing we know about the future is Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back to claim his own. And we live from now till then glorifying God and teaching and preaching the gospel. That's what I know. That's what I know. So guys, sometimes we have to just start, stop making excuses. And we have to be honest and just accept responsibility. A lot of us can beat ourselves up for who we've been or who we were. It is God who can heal us and make us who he needs us to be. So just be honest with yourself. Maybe 2022 was not your year. Maybe you haven't had a good year since 2019. I don't know. Just be honest about that and be willing to move forward with that under the blessings and the grace of God. Here's what Proverbs says. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. How about it? Is there something you've been dragging through your life the last couple of years that you just need to repent of? That you just need to turn away from? And you know what? I think so many times we think, well, I don't have this like really big sin in my life. What if it's our attitude? How has your attitude been the last few years in a time that you couldn't control and things happened that were out of your decision-making ability? Maybe we've drugged that bad attitude with us for a while. Maybe we've drugged judgment of others for a while. Maybe we've drugged uh, self-righteousness for a while. Maybe it's just time we came clean and said, you know what? I haven't been who I could have been. And that's keeping me from prospering, which is keeping the community from prospering. And so I'm asking for God to have mercy. So stop making excuses as we head into 2023. Without counsel, plans go awry. But in the multitude of counselors, there are established a man has joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? The way of life winds upward for the wise that he may turn away from hell below. How's your, your life winding right now? Is it winding upwards? I'm not talking about your circumstances. I'm talking about your relationship with God. Is it better in December than it was in January? You see, New Year's calls us to stop and think. And I don't know that's a bad thing. I think we often have to stop and think of who am I and where am I going? And sometimes we get so busy we forget to do those things. Where's your counsel coming from? Where is your wisdom coming from? Has it changed from January to December to be more reliant on word and God for wisdom? So stop making those excuses of of why it can't be or what you can't be and instead turn to a God who says you can be and I want you to be. One of the things that may stand in your way may be this whole thing, right? Ego. Anybody in here got an ego problem? Here's what I find most of us do. We point to someone else. That ever happened? Say, I know, oh yeah, I know lots of people got an ego problem. Is it you? Oh no, it's not me. (laughs) You know, sometimes people have said ego stands for edging God out because we think we know everything. We think we know what God ought to do. Well, guys, I'll tell you, as someone who has served God a long time, sometimes I don't always know what God's going to do. Sometimes I don't know what God's going to do till he's finished with it. I go, wow, I see it now. And sometimes I'm in it and I don't. And sometimes I'm past it and I still don't. And sometimes I don't even know it's coming. But what I have to know is that God is in it and God is doing it. It's for my good. It's for my good, even when I don't understand it. So the second thing I would tell you to do this morning, not only stop excuses, is take an inventory of your life. That's a hard one. I've worked for two different companies that had inventory. I worked for a production company where once a month we went around the whole warehouse and we inventoried, inventoried, that's the word I'm looking for, everything. We had to measure, we had to weigh, we had to count. Those were not the most exciting days. If you had asked most of us what we did that day and say, what did you produce out of the factory today? We would have said very little. But it was necessary for that company to know how much was left on hand, how much work was still to do, how much needed to be ordered. It was a time to stop and think. I worked in another company that we did it once a year in retail. 
And we did it after we closed. We didn't even get to do it during the work day. We had to work all day and do retail. And then we, we closed down the store. And from that moment, we counted all the things left in the store to see how our books matched. Can I tell you, working for two companies with two different inventory systems, two different ways, every time we did it, we always seemed to come up short. Never did we do inventory and go, oh, we've got extra product. Right, we, we, we've got all this leftover. No, every year we were either short a few cans of paint or we were missing several board feet of lumber in the other job that I had. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. When you do inventory, you may feel sometime that you've come up short, but God doesn't feel that way. I need you to hear that. God doesn't feel that way. God has been with you through another year and I hope has watched you grow. Guys, where were you in January of 2022? Where were we in December of 2021? That was a year ago. Well, what's changed? Some things have gotten better. Some things have gotten better. Have we glorified God in that? And yes, some things have maybe taken turns that we did not expect. But when we take inventory, we also get to learn from our experiences. Can I walk you through inventory for just a moment? You don't have to get out a piece of paper. You don't have to do any math. I'm not going to ask you at the end whether you came up short. What I'm going to ask you is just think about the last year of your life. And some of you, that's hard. Can I go ahead and be honest with you in a room this size? Some of you, that is hard. This has not been the year you prefer to take inventory of. And for some of you, this is the year you can't wait to tell people about. You believe it's been one of your best years. We're probably going to know, neither know the answer to either of those questions for years to come. I told you I'm a professional historian, and here's what we often say in the history community. We never know if it matters for 30 years. Can, can I tell you that? We never know if it matters for 30 years. I often tell my students about headlines that say things like, resignation of a president. Richard Nixon will resign. But I tell them in those same papers, several pages back, were articles about people in a garage inventing a personal computer. Well, 30 years after those events would be around the year 2000. Which one impacts us most today? I pretty much use a computer every day. And some of you haven't thought about Richard Nixon until I said his name. Have you ever thought about that? We don't always know, do we, where things are going to go. We get so caught up in the now, and we forget sometime about the eternal. So let's just think about some things that may have happened in your life. You know what I like the story about the prodigal son? I thought about spending the whole time on the prodigal son, but I want to save that if we do parables uh, later in the year. Here's the part I think we miss. After all the story of a young man who goes off and he gets his inheritance and he leaves the family and he spends it on riotous living, in verse 17 there's a but. And I always tell you look in the scripture for wherefore, therefore, buts, because the story's about to change. And here it says, but when he came to himself, you know what he did? He took inventory. He looked around at the life that he was living. He thought about the life that he had been raised in. He thought about the life that he could have had and the life that he chose. And he found out that it came up short. You may remember a few weeks ago, we looked at a king who was weighed in the balances and found wanting. It says in the prodigal son, he comes to himself and he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you and I am in no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. You know, that's what repentance is taking inventory for a moment and realizing there may be some things that keep us from being with the Father. So let's talk about some things for just a moment. There are really four kinds of experiences you probably went through this year. Are you with me? We're going to do it very quickly. The first one is personal experiences. Has God used any personal experiences to shape you? I've got a lesson. I preached it here. Maybe I should preach it again about the, the potter about God and the potter's will, how God is often having to press and form and shape us into the vessel he needs us to be. 
Some of you had some personal experiences here that has formed and shaped you for service. I think of others in this room, others in this room who may have had vocational or educational changes. We've had some job changes in this room this year, haven't we? We've had some people go to school. We've had some people who are going to be finishing school in 2023. What are those things that have shaped and made us? I go to school every day and those things shape and make me. And I talk to kids about the future and what it might be. How has God used those changes to put you with a group of people that have strengthened you or that you now minister to or that, that have become family to you that you could never imagined when you made that change that it was God focused? You just thought you were changing a job. God says, no, I'm going to change your life through that. I think of the other thing, spiritual experiences. You had any spiritual experiences this year? Have you grown any spiritually? I don't know if it was at your house. I don't think we really had one of these at our house. But some of you may have places in your house where you put the kids up every few months or once a year and you make a mark on the wall and you compare growth. And have you ever noticed kids always want to what? Measure. Oh, have I grown? Have I grown? Have I grown? Guys, what if we did that spiritually? What if there was some mark on the wall that, that we could mark and it says January 2022. This is where you are spiritually. Will you go stand by your mark and God's going to come around and see if you have grown? Now kids, what do they do? I'll stand on my tiptoes, hopefully not fall over, right? Don't wish that. I saw some of you. <laughs> Where would our mark be? Are we spiritually stronger than we were in January of 2022 now that it is December of 2022? Have we tried to grow? You know, if a kid's not growing, we often get concerned. We talk about their diet. What have you been putting into you in 2022? We talk about the things they're doing. What are you doing in 2022? We, we talk about the, their attitude. I mean, come on, think of all the things that we'd be worried about, concerned about, asking questions about. I'm asking you to think about your spiritual experiences in 2022. And lastly, number four, have you had any painful experiences in 2022? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. I was on the phone last night with a lady who is going through a painful experience. It's not the one she imagined or envisioned just a few days ago. She had a totally different outlook for how 2022 was going to end for her, and now it's not going to end that way. We've had some painful experiences in this room, some known, some unknown. Proverbs 24.10 says, if you do not faint in the day of adversity, if you, excuse me, faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Guys, one thing I want to let you know is please don't look at someone else and think it was their best year. You don't know that. We don't always know in a room like this what everyone has gone through. Sometime, can I be honest, church? Sometime we're not honest with each other in here. And you'll have the same conversation that I'll have on many a Sunday morning. How are you? And what's the required answer we think? Fine, how are you? Guys, this is the one place we ought to be able to come and ask people how they are. And when they say, thank you for asking. Can, can I really tell you? Now guys, you ask. You ask. Are we really willing to sit and talk to people about where they are? And yes, it's hard sometimes. And so we've been shaped this year. How about act in faith? I thought that was appropriate. We're going to talk about acts this coming year. I'm looking forward to that study. Stephen, I know, is already working on that study. I've been praying about the things that he'll bring up in that study as we begin to act in faith. Did you read about Moses? Moses was constantly acting in faith, not knowing where the story was going. From baby to basket to banishment, right? I mean, those are the things that we'll be talking about this Wednesday night. So think about those people in the Bible who acted in faith. Women who touched the hem of Jesus' garment, believing that would heal them. Even though there was no story before that it had ever happened, even though there was no commandment that that would happen, she believed that just being with Jesus was healing. I think also of two blind men who come to Jesus, and Jesus compliments them about their faith. 
Then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened and Jesus sternly warned them saying, see that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him and all that country. I want to focus in on a part of that verse 29. Then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. Now, I don't know all that that means. It means that they believed Jesus could heal them. But what if Jesus had healed them according to their faith and their faith had not been strong? What would have been their vision? You know, we often talk about how hindsight is 2020. Why don't we have faith that we can also look ahead with God? We may not be able to see everything clearly, but we know that God is there and he's leading us to where he needs us to be. Those men came to Jesus. And, and are you with me here? Those men came to Jesus without ever seeing him do a miracle. Did you hear that? They had never seen him do a miracle. And yet they believe that what? He could. He could. So guys, act in faith as we head into the new year. You got faith? Is it, is it a live faith? Is it a believing faith? Is it the faith we read about in Hebrews of people like Moses and those before and those afterwards who their life is constantly changing, yet God is in the midst? And how do you get rid of failure? You see, one of the things that crushes our faith is often failure. You know, you've probably failed in 2022. I have. I can stand here before a group and there are some things that I didn't get done that I thought I'd get done in 2022. There are some things that I thought would go different in 2022 and, and, and they didn't work out. And, and some of that's my fault. I'll, I'll take that responsibility. But that doesn't mean because you failed. It doesn't mean because you failed you're, you're in final. Right? You're not final. You just failed. We often tell people to pick themselves up and that's not always easy. I don't want to stand up here and give just cute little phrases and, and you guys leave and, and I'm not here to just be a cheerleader, although I believe we need to be excited about what God's got planned for us. I often know that it's hard sometimes when we fail and it's hard because we beat ourselves up. But you know, we have a God who picks ourselves up and who binds our wounds and washes our feet. If anything we've learned about Jesus, he is looking for people to follow him. He doesn't throw them out by failure. Do you remember anything we learned in Luke? Well, Jesus, I'll die with you. And then they sit in a courtyard and they say they don't even know him. They hear him preach things and they follow him and they steal from the treasury box. There are those that say, oh, I believe Jesus, but on that cross, they're nowhere to be found. Jesus knows that we fail, but Jesus still wants relationship with us. And guys, in a few moments, we will gather at a table to see how that relationship is going. So don't fear failure. Faith is not always an absence of fear, though. We have to move ahead in spite of our fear. And that's a hard one. One of the biggest things I think Satan uses in our life is fear. I see it in students. I see it in people. They, they want to get involved, but well, what if it's not the right? Okay, what if it's not the right thing for you? What if you volunteer for something at church and after doing it once or twice, you realize it's not your thing? Do you know that's okay? Can I say that twice? It's okay. It doesn't mean there isn't something here for you. It doesn't mean God isn't going to open another ministry for you. It doesn't mean that you might try something you think, well, I'm going to try, but I don't, and all of a sudden it is your thing. It's getting over that fear of trying. When the elders come and challenge us, when a deacon asks you, when an announcement is made, I know sometimes you sit here and you probably think, well, I mean, I, I guess I could do that. Try it. Just try it. And if it's your, not your thing, you know that's okay. Not everybody in the Bible was it their thing. Some were called to preach to the Gentiles, and some were called to preach to the Jews. Guys, God is asking you to use your talents, but to try them and see where he can grow them. And so lastly, in verse, verse 4, point 4, and you say last, well, yeah, we're going to bring the kids in in just a moment. I need you to refocus. I need you to refocus. There has been a lot to keep us unfocused. And I'm going to be honest, December is not a good focus time, is it? I'm going to tell you a true story. 
Emily Cron, I didn't ask to tell this story. And right now she's looking at me like, oh, I can never come to church again. No, 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 no. Last Wednesday night, I'll tell you what, this is where I was unfocused. It depends on what people are focused on. Last Wednesday night, I did a lesson down here for the adults. And as Emily was leaving, she says, 10 and a half. And I'm thinking, oh, that's awesome. She thought my lesson was a 10 and a half. She was telling me there were 10 and a half school days left. <laughs> you see, we were focused on different things, weren't we? Focused, I mean, I thought, oh man, what a good, oh, she'd have loved that lesson. And then I find out, no, she's focused on ending her December. And I get it, Emily, I'm with you, I'm with you. Okay, I get it. Aren't we sometimes focused on the wrong things? And especially this time of year, we focus on perfection and making memories instead of just being. Instead of just being. You know, no one's going to know if you have one less casserole on that table. I have never been to a family eating where the food ran out. I have never been to a family meeting where the food ran out, okay? It's probably not going to happen at your family either. And yes, something's not going to get on the table, and maybe you forgot to put something out. But you know what? Is that what it's really the focus? What is our focus this morning? What is our focus this morning? Well, I hope it's on Jesus Christ, right? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable. That's the least. Just being here this morning is the least you can do. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's Romans 12. That's Romans 12. Guys, have you come today for God to work with you, to remind you of what he did for you so that he can work in you to go out there to a world that needs to hear the gospel? Proverbs says it this way, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. Where's your heart this morning? Where's your heart this morning? That's what we're going to ask you to examine in just a few moments. In just a few moments, we gather around a table and we examine our, we take inventory. Not of a year, but of a week. Isn't it great that God is a little more understanding of who we are? He doesn't ask us to remember. Remember the, the children of Israel, their sins were forgiven one time a year. They had to worry about them, uh, remember them, kind of hold on to them in a way. And one time of year, God went to the mercy seat, or excuse me, the priest went to the mercy seat and put blood on it and sins were forgiven. Guys, our sins were forgiven once and for all. And today we remember that before we head out into a world that needs to hear that. I beseech you, therefore... Present your bodies a holy sacrifice. Guys, the way you think determines the way you feel. When you leave today, are you closer to God? And the way you feel is going to determine the way you act. Psalms 1 says it this way. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Are you spending time in the Word? That may be why 2022 wasn't your, your month, your year. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Where are you? Is that where you need to be? Or do we need to move forward as we go to 2023? And be where God needs us to be so he can accomplish what he wants to accomplish with you. Here's the saddest stories of the Bible. The times that God accomplished things without people. I think of the children of Israel who left Egypt and could have seen the promised land. But they mumbled and they grumbled and they missed it. Let's let the kids in. Let's let the kids in. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He and 
answers prayers. He answers prayers. He answers prayers. He's so good. He's so good to me. Shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, a great King of all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain beasts belong to him. The sea is his, he made it, and his hands they form the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep of His hand, and the sheep of His hand. For our children who are joining us, we have been looking at not star, although that's what it spells right now, and we are talking about some men who will probably be following a star in a future lesson, and there will be a lot of stars on display this season, maybe on the top of a tree or, or outside someone's home, and we may be reminded of what many people are thinking about, but this morning I want to refocus ourselves on start, on start. And I want to close with a T that even your kids understand, and that is trust. That is trust. Guys, if we're going to start 2023, we've got to do all those things, and we've got to trust. I would say more than many generations before us, at least in the last few years, we have been called to trust. To trust when we didn't understand. To trust that our elders were making the best decisions with the information they had. To trust that your ministry staff what was praying and, and teaching and, and thinking and, and wanting to help and be there in times when sometimes we couldn't. Zechariah says it this way, you will not succeed by your own strength. Did you hear me? You will not succeed by your own strength or power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Do you trust it in this morning? Are you ready to stop making excuses? Are you ready to take that inventory? Are you ready to act in faith? Are you ready to refocus? We could even use the word repent there. And fifthly, are you ready to trust God? That's what he's asking on a day like today. That's what he's asking every day. It's just on a day like today, maybe we are a little more focused on it. And so I wish you a happy new year. But you know, a new life doesn't have to wait for a new year. Did you hear that? A new life doesn't have to wait for a new year. That's a date we give. We give January 1st as the new year. What about a new life? Well, that's what we celebrate in a few moments. And that might be what somebody needs to celebrate this morning as we stand and as we sing. So, holy Savior, thou art needing. So, holy Savior. 